So I'm really excited that you are coming with us on the cruise. Yep, me too. Looking forward to it. <laughs> well, you know it's going to be it's so really great. Cool. And really cool. I always appreciate the stuff that you do for Angular Air and coming nice. on and chatting with you about things. It's very cool to be uh, <laughs> part of this community and have opportunity to interact with the community and share help and share knowledge. It's awesome. Yeah. So I know recently you've been. Um, since you've been building such awesome apps at your company, you've been talking about this idea of components. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's great to see Angular, or I would just say front-end frameworks in general, componentizing everything. Right. But it, it sounds like during, during implementation, you found some issues. Yeah, yeah it's definitely a, a challenge. You know, you sit there and go, okay, this component world, it's, it's great. You know, we can, we can group these things down, we can isolate these things, you know, we can put styles isolated our components and, and input and output data and stuff, and, and you quickly get enamored with it, and then you're like, oh, I just want to componentize all the things. And you start thinking in this process of, oh, I'll make a component out of that, out of that, all the way down to this button, I'll make a component out of that. And uh, while well, that's great and the system allows you to do that and, and it has these benefits, there's also a price that you pay as you start doing that, right? And I think it's important. It's interesting in this component world, you know, developers and, and designers, they need to, to work in there, they need to understand that it's, you, you got to kind of become a commoda architect to do that. Yeah. You have to understand what's going on and then the prices that you pay and then make architectural decisions on how you want to best approach that, right? So what are some of the best ways to approach that? I think, you know, know, getting an understanding of what Angular does to do its component thing. I mean, we're in this world in Angular where the entire app is a component tree. It starts with the component at the top, and then you have just tree down from there, right? So you have to, everything's got to be a component from there. And so to understand what it does um, in terms of it has to do this compilation of your component and these little bits that help Angular know how to do a component thing with it. and then as it runs through and processes those to, to do those things. And then to understand like the different ways you can wrangle that or put that together for your different pieces of your application and figure out what, what is most efficient for that. So maybe not pay so much of that component tax to do that, but then also still accomplish what you need to do. Yeah. Can you break down for us what 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 is the tax that one single component pays? So uh, I like to, to identify for one. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I like to identify it as like you've got this payload and this execution tax, and those are the two taxes that, like, it's just inherited as part of the Angular platform. Like, Angular's got to do its thing to do components, and those are the things you pay. The payload tax is just the compilation and all the bits that go into a single component, um, and that help Angular know how to do its component thing, and then the execution is how, as Angular runs over your app, it has to make decisions and, and do prep work on those components. And so those are two things that you, the platform just has to do to get the benefit out of building your platform, that's okay. And then uh, then we start seeing, so, so we live with those, right? But we understand that they exist because each time we create a new component, we're paying a little bit more in our app. Um, and so we start creating a ton of components, we're paying a lot more. So just be cognizant of that thinking in terms of before we go create a component everywhere. Uh, and then we start seeing in some of our patterns that we build out, um, these other kind of taxes that start to surface, things like a container element tax with custom elements that we decide to use. And knowing that like you can kind of combat that if you do different types of selectors for your components, um, attribute selectors, and then leverage existing DOM elements, stuff like that. And then like a tree coupling tax is my other one that I like. I think that one's like that one's like the biggest challenging one because we're sitting in this again in this component tree that everything is part of that component tree, and, and as you build pieces, they're they're connected in some way, right? Mm -hmm. So now how do you, but the whole concept of the components is they can kind of exist in isolation and encapsulation of something, right? Mm -hmm. But now you're kind of tying them in. So this tree coupling is that case that they all tie in together. And so how do you combat that so you don't get yourself in a situation where I can't refactor, I can't move things around, I can't add new components into that tree without having a lot of work to do. So mm -hmm. be mindful of those sort of things. and then. You know, give and take and trade off of, okay, I'm okay with it here, but or I can tackle it that way. So, that's a lot. <laughs> it's but, a lot. I mean, it, it's, 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 I've never thought about that before. Yeah. I just say component all the things, but yeah, I yeah, don't yeah. think I actually yeah. care usually when I'm building apps yeah, about yeah. how big my app is. Yeah. My apps are usually, actually, I wonder if they are big or small. Yeah. 
<laughs> you know, I, I, these things just, they start, you know, I, I, one of the challenges is, is tough with Angular is I think it's like, you have this toolbox, like, like Angular platform is a toolbox. Uh -huh. You really have to like understand what tools you have in it, right. and then just approach each individual piece, segment of your app, going, okay, what tools am I going to use to build that piece? Right. Um, because it's really hard, I think, from what I've seen in terms of building out apps in Angular, to kind of identify one pattern and then just go, oh, all my individual pieces of my application are built in the same pattern and yeah. it fits. Yeah. Um, you know, because then you just get this this part of. You know, but I mean, is there stuff. some you know, like what you're saying is, hey, this is one way you can optimize for the performance of your app, and you're also saying, hey, this is something you need to think about. Yes. when you're building things, but can you give a piece of advice to see, like, you know, I, I don't think you could say, don't make button components, right? But what is what is that advice? Right. So, yeah, it's, you know, back when Angular was alpha, uh, alpha and beta and stuff, I mean, I, I've been going through this for a long time, and mm -hmm. my initial reaction was like, we can't, we can't componentize all the things. So you gotta, you gotta, don't, don't go crazy with them. But as that unfolded, I'm like, there's so much power in componentizing things, yeah. right? Um, even down to a little bit of saying, look, I can scope my CSS to that. So even if I made a component on that button that didn't do much logic, but I could scope my CSS, hey, there's value in that. Right. So I wanted to find a way, is there an answer to say, that's okay, mm -hmm. be, how can I be okay with it? How can I you know, teach people to say, yeah, you're fine, componentize. Well, well, the only way you can really do that is that they have an understanding of what's going on so they can make you know, confident decisions and good decisions around that. I think what you're saying is, as you're building an app, and if you're looking at it and it's just way too huge, to make good decisions on making it smaller, one thing you could look at that maybe some people don't look at is their component tree. I think so. Okay. I mean, I think okay. so, definitely. I mean, I think in terms of, you know, we talk about, usually we create components and there are examples of creating components that have all been around, like you create a custom element. And right. then that's your component selector. Yeah. And then you go crazy and you got them. The more components you have, the more custom selectors you have, custom elements you have everywhere. And then you're, you, you end up putting content inside of the template that's going to render inside of that, right? Uh -huh. And then you quickly start going, oh, well, I'm going to render a piece of content that has a section element in it and then some content inside of that. Now I've got this extra section element that I have to put in a custom element. So I've got all these extra elements in our DOM you yeah. know, that we quickly load up with, whereas we could target you know, existing elements yeah. and just do an attribute selector or something. And so we can kind of architect that, that composition of components in maybe a more efficient DOM manner mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that. And if, if you're thinking that, then you can kind of work that out over time. It's really exciting to see people like you, getting the community to actually think about this. I know at a recent ng-conf you have a video uh, giving a talk about this. Do you have any blog posts anywhere? I, I don't on this topic. Okay. Um, but uh, Talk is probably a good place to start. Yeah, talk is a great place to start. Uh -huh. um, you know, I really just want to get people thinking about it and raise awareness of yeah. like, look, like, get this on your mind. You're component architects. This is, you don't just jump right in here and just start crafting your HTML and some logic and scripting and you're going. You have to be aware of this stuff. And if you're aware of that, then you can make decisions. You know, these decisions are totally fine, whatever you decide to go with. You know, you're paying, it's cost-benefit analysis, but, um, but just be aware of this so that you can make the smart decisions yeah. that are, are so I know two places, three places we can find you. Number one, we can find you at angularair.com because yep. you're one of the hosts there. Yeah. And then we can find you on ngcruise, ngcruise.com coming up. Coming so that. if anybody wants to hack with Justin, yeah. I'm going to trap you. Totally. Make you look at totally. my apps. <laughs> I, I really looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to interacting and, and working on yeah. stuff during that time. It's yeah. going to be great. Yeah. It's going to be really good. Yeah. And it's then good. where can we find you on Twitter? Twitter is Schwarty. S C H W A R T Y. Cool. Yeah, and I'm, I'm always on there. I'm on GitHub, J Schwarty. Somebody okay. else has Schwarty. Perfect. So, um, but yeah, uh, hit me up on Twitter. I'm always active on there, so it's a good place to reach out to me. You know. Cool. And then watch us on Angular Air. It hosts that show every week. So, awesome. Cruz. Join I us on the cruise. I know. Thank you. Hey there! Are you into reactive programming using JavaScript? Do you have to deal with asynchrony in your web app? And join this dot instructor Ben Lesh to learn all of the ins and outs of RxJS in his hands-on workshop. Available online and in person, go to rxworkshop.com for more details and to book your spot today.